still quite a bit different than it was yesterday, but it's still a beautiful day. And uh, the sun is shining right now. It's windy and very cold, as he told you. We'll bring you up to date again, of course, on the weather. And we'll keep you posted on the weather periodically throughout the afternoon. We have what I think is going to be a most interesting program this afternoon. A couple of guests to begin. And uh, if you'll recall, on the 30th of November, our guest on the newsmaker line was a Mr. Frank Collin, head of the American Nazi Party, calling out of Chicago. And we had a rather controversial program. And during that program, a statement was made that there is no such thing as a black Hebrew or a black Israeli. Well, uh, I'm not sure if uh, black Israeli is the correct term or not, but we have two guests who qualify as black Hebrews who are going to talk with us this afternoon. And I think we're going to have a, have a very, very interesting program. We have one in our studio, and we have one on our VIP line. We have Jeremiah and Hananiah Israel. And uh, as Jeremiah was telling me, the, the custom is that the older goes first, so we are going to talk with Hananiah first on the phone. Are you there, sir? Yes, sir. And we welcome you to the program. Uh, pleased to be here, and thank you for the opportunity. Well, we're very, very glad to... Uh, glad to do it. We thank you for taking the time to be with us. I would like you to make some opening comments. I want to tell our audience, first of all, that our number is 457-1210, and of course, the main ingredient of this program is the audience, and they can call in at any time and ask any question or make any comment they would like, and we would encourage you to do so, 457-1210. Right now, Ann and I, if you could make some initial comments, and then we'll go to the telephone. Uh, yes, I would like to say that uh, I would like to comment on the uh, uh, speech that was made by the Nazi Party representative of the Socialist Party. Right, Frank Collins. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Collins. And I would like to sort of take a stand in behalf of the so-called Negro in America. Okay. And uh, first I must say... Irregardless of how the public will receive this message, I cannot deal with the truth unless I deal with the original source of truth. And in that uh, respect, I'll have to refer to the great and terrible creator of the universe. Okay. That's from him, from him I draw my concepts. Okay, and you're talking about God, right? Yes, sir. I'm talking about the, uh, the great creator. Okay, you're not going to get any argument from me on that. How about, uh, you use the Bible a great deal also, don't you? Yes, we have to use that because he left that as a reference for his people, the very people that this man has uh, formulated in the back of his mind to destroy. This is what the record is for, and I must say that the book that's called the Bible, especially the Old Testament and the book of Revelation, are directed directly to the so-called Negro in America. That's the only reason it has for being in the English language in the first place. And it was written by black people from a black creator. So I think this uh, young man should know this. Uh, perhaps he already knows it, but... On the other hand, with the wisdom of the great and mighty Creator, He has a purpose for everything, even the lonely worm. He has a purpose for it. So in this man's case, we have to acknowledge the fact that in the back of his mind, he has a very noble mission to carry out for the Most High, because it was for this purpose that the Almighty Creator of the universe allowed this man to be on the planet Earth down into the 20th century. And that divine purpose is that he correct his people. And this is what we have been waiting for, who understand and know for oh, so many years, or several decades, we've been waiting for this because this is one of the things in prophecy that it must be fulfilled. And we, we feel as though what happened at the prison of Attica is going to happen in every town, village, and hamlet in America. We also feel as though this man is speaking for every white individual in America, regardless of whether they have compassion on a few, I mean, have compassion on 
on the matter one's people, and Solomon prayed when he dedicated the temple. He prayed that a few would have compassion on his people, but the overall sense would be when this violence does start, or this corrupting measure starts, then those that ordinarily would seek an out, they would have to join the crowd in order to not be victims themselves. So we still are going. The man is is a in a very, very noble mission. Okay, so essentially what you're saying then is that uh, Frank Collin was in effect, in your mind, speaking for me. Yes, sir. Okay. I want to introduce the uh, uh, Jeremiah Israel and welcome you also to the program. Thank you, sir, and pleased to be here. And we're glad to have you as well. And uh, do you have any comments? Yes, we were uh, listening to the transcript of Frank Collins, the uh, American Socialist Nazi leader. By the way, I'll just, I'll just uh, explain. I provided them with a tape-recorded transcript or tape-recorded copy of the entire program. Oh. Right, because I didn't hear it uh, first off when it came off uh, airtime uh, on November the 30th. But I had previously told people <coughs> that this is what the concession was for black people in America to go under this terrible purge of their own people because this man here has never been a friend of theirs and he's never helped them and if they haven't realized that the man hasn't taught them who they are what they're doing here what they came from where they came from and what is in the future of their destiny that he hasn't taught them any truth so this is one of the main reasons why we took up the position to come here and speak for the so-called negro now we're not saying we're the total sp spokesman for them because 99.99 percent .99 are not in the message and they're not it's not for them they don't want it but we're speaking for those who can understand whose eyes are open whose ears are unstopped and who will accept the mighty one's word how do you how do you define those who will accept the message well all those whose uh, name is wrote in the lamb book of life they can't accept it that's revelation 13 and 8 revelation 17 and 8 revelation 21 and 27 all those whose name are on the lamb book of life uh, they can accept it. Those names who's not are on it, then they, then, then they can't get the message anyway. They'll have to go through the do you, do you consider yourself, do you have a t-shirt on that says children of Israel? Do you consider yourself Jewish? Well, yes. Uh, at the back of my t-shirt says I'm the real McCoy. You okay. see, there's only, there's only uh, 12 tribes of um, Israel and there's no white tribe. All of them are black. That's why Moses, um, the mighty one, gives a clear effort that they're black because everyone, I don't know everyone, I'll rephrase that. Um, I was in Chicago, me and Hannah and I went there to see the King Tut uh, exhibit, and it's in New Orleans now to my knowledge. And there's no secret that the uh, ancient Egyptians were black people, jet black people, then the thought that should come into my people's mind is that when uh, Moses was sailing down the river and they picked him up and he was accepted as an Egyptian, that means they had to be the same color. So this is, um, this is in itself something that should motivate the black man's mind in America to begin to think that he does have a nationality and he's not something that was uh, made up or manufactured at Frigidaire somewhere or Delco products. He is, a, he is a human being and he has a source. Okay, now why would you say, if you listen to that tape, you know that I didn't take Frank Collins' point of view. Why would you say that he was my spokesman? I didn't say that. Hannah and I did. Okay. But I do agree with it. Okay, why? Because I believe he does speak for the concession of all white America. Because the white man is the black man's enemy. And that starts in Genesis 3.15. The mighty one himself put hatred between white people and black people. It's not a crime to be prejudiced. It's not a crime to have hate towards white people. It's not a crime for that because the mighty one himself put hatred between the two seeds. There's two seeds in the Garden of Eden, not one. How now, would you like to comment on that? Yes, that's uh that's one of the things that uh, makes this uh, subject be very controversial. We've got to step on the toes of uh, our own people. we got to step on the toes of our enemy. But to deal with facts, we have to deal with facts as they are. And as Jeremiah just uh, mentioned, uh, we are in our enemy's land. We were sent over here by the Creator to be punished by this place for 400 years. And fortunately, these 400 years are just about up, but the mighty one made a special stipulation that 12,000 out of each tribe must be able to absorb this message and be able to walk black, talk black, think black, do black, act black, look forward to a black government. And he also has uh, proposed that the prince of the new world will be David. David was a black man. All the people that I referred to in the, my opening statement are black people that are referred to in the only authentic history that we can refer to. 
and we are the um, recipients of the big end of it. Now, just because he sent us over here in slavery, don't forget, slavery is the, is the most drastic punishment that a nation can go through. There's no punishment compared with slavery. And the mighty one himself says, through the prophet Isaiah in the 47th chapter, and I think it's about the 6th verse, that he was only a little wrong or a little angry with his people when he sent us over here. But this fellow showed us no mercy. This is why we are a cut-off nation in such a miser miserable condition that I heard even my people commenting on the same program. They seemed as though they felt like they were proud to have white blood flowing in their veins, but we have a message for them. They better find some scientific way to get it out of, here, out of there before the, uh, the mighty one returns, because these things are authentic facts. They are not fictions. And since we are in our enemy's land, he had the pride of, her, of our name, our language, our customs, for just a moment. Yeah. We're talking with Jeremiah, Hananiah, Israel. Our guests will go to our telephones. We have one line available, 457-1210, and the other three are uh, lit and uh, callers are waiting, so we ask those callers to be patient. We'll get to you in just a moment. Right now, we're going to pause for this. Harry Gerson, to tell you that if you've been thinking of buying a Frigidaire plants, then you've got to come to Miami Hardware and Plants Company, where we sell Frigidaire for less than the off-brand the largest selection of Frigidaire in the state of Ohio. So drive out today and we can deliver the same day. Yes, Jeremiah and Hananiah Israel. Jeremiah is here in the studio. Hananiah is on our VIP line, our newsmaker line. And we have a caller on the line as well. So, good afternoon. You're on Wavy. Gentlemen. Yes. Uh, I was looking forward to... I've been looking forward to this uh, to a great extent. And I was looking forward to seeing two men of the Hamitic tribe, or what you might call dark-skinned Jewish people. Now, I want to ask a couple of questions, if you can give me an answer in the short, and then I'll uh, ask you one other. Number one, are both of you gentlemen, uh, born, were both of you born here in the United States? Hello? Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't have your microphone on. Yes, we were both born, but we're not of Hamedic tribe. We're of uh, the um, seed of Seth. I'm, I'm asking you now, were you born in the United States here? Yes, we were born here. Now, uh, your, your uh, forefathers, your father, mother, and grandparents, were they born here in America or in the Near East or Middle East? They were born here in America. Here in America. Then, what I'm, I'm about to make an assumption, you can correct me now, then the title and the names that you have assumed or taken upon yourself for your group and your heritage is, is, is a culture-made thing here in the United States. You made those names up yourselves. Uh, your organization is, is historically here in the United States. No, that's false. We didn't make the names up ourselves. The uh, names came from the East. All good names come from the East. Only the damnation names come from the West. Uh, we didn't change our names. We reclaimed our names. Uh, history shows here in America who changed the black man's name and who put the black man in the position of a yes. servant or a, 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 a house man or a field negro. Now, I think biblically and historically, you're, you're on solid ground. But I'm wondering if, if your statements today are not just direct uh, reaction to this uh, Nazi brown shirt thing that we had on last week. Uh, do, do you have a religious house, a temple? Do you have a... A uh, God or Muhammad or what? Well, no, sir, we don't have a religious system here. We don't have a temple. We don't have a church. We're uh, cut off. We've been cut off from worshiping the Most High because we have a clear-cut example that we cannot worship among other people. Oh, yeah. And you can see that by the mighty one tasking, telling uh, Moses to ask Pharaoh to give him three days journey away from Egypt, away from the Egyptians, so that they may worship the Most High. Hannah, you want to reply on that also? I can say this, and I'll be through, sir. Uh, I, I think you're biblically and historically you're on solid ground, and the only thing I'd like to see is that you not preach antagonism, but 
tried to bring some love and uh, amity into the situation. Well, I think Collins had it right when you don't love your enemy. And uh, the mighty one said that we would be sent into the land of our enemies. And uh, that love business over there at Ecclesiastes could say there is a time to love and a time to hate. Uh, so a time for war and a time for peace. And the black man in America cannot ask for peace yet until he's in his own land. That's when he'll have peace. Hannah, you want to reply on that? Uh, yes, I was just about to comment. The, the black man in America is wearing someone else's name, speaking someone else's language that they borrowed themselves. And he is uh, uh, acquainting himself with someone else's customs. In fact, the man has nothing of his own. He is actually not a first-class zombie in this land. This has been um, scientifically programmed in order that this man would be a cut-off people. This is also written in the solid ground that you speak about. It's in Psalms, the 83rd chapter from 1 to 7. It says, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel shall be no more in remembrance. And this is why that we have thousands and thousands and thousands of our people that are wearing the names of their enemy, knowing not that they have a name of their own. And this is what we have did. We have reclaimed our name, and this name is the name of the almighty, black, woolly-haired, all fiery, all mean, all merciful, creator of the universe, and we'll find this recorded in, in uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 10. We are wearing the creator's name. We're not taking up no kind of ism, no kind of schism. He gave us covenants and commandments to keep. He never gave us any religion. All these religious connects belong to the enemy. They don't belong to us whatsoever. And this is the message we're trying to get over to our people. We're also complimenting Mr. Collins on his role that he has to play. Okay, thank you very much. You're on, Wavy. Yes, uh, I'd like to talk to your guests if I might. Yes, go ahead. And li listening to what they've commented on, they are saying, if I understand correctly, that they're saying that uh, God is black, the first man was black. Do I understand that correctly? We didn't say it, uh, first man was black, but you got that right. Go ahead. All right. Now, in relation to this, have you ever studied what the word Adam means? Yeah. What does it mean? It means black. No. What does it mean then? Red earth, red clay. It has nothing to do with black. Is topsoil, is virgin soil topsoil? Pardon me? Is virgin soil topsoil? Well, it, it means exactly what it said. It said the you word know. Adam means red clay. The word Adam, A-D-A-M-H, means red earth. Well, how about Adama? Adama, red earth. Mm-hmm. Well, we're I'll, talking about in that regard, if we're going to talk about color, which I don't think it is, uh, we would have to say then if we're going about the color of the earth, that doesn't necessarily mean that the first man was red, other than he was made of red earth, if that is correct. Now, God is a spirit. Spirits have no color that I can determine. And I don't know where you're drawing your conclusions from. Then going back and studying out the ancient races, the Afro-Negro necessarily did not come out of the East. And you're saying that he did. Most of the, if I understand the history of this country, most of the Negroes that were transported in slavery here came from out of the Afro-nations, out of the Middle East. I want to ask you a question. All right. Am I a spirit? Are you a spirit? 